and welcome to Connecting Hawaii Business on Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Kathleen Lee, and I am your host for this program. Today, I am excited to have on the show my friend Mark Clemente, and he and I are going to talk about business and politics, which is very relevant, especially uh, this month. So, Mark, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Kathleen. Thrilled to be here. Uh of course. Um, before we go delve into that, tell our viewers a bit about yourself and your background. Thank you so much. So a little bit about me. Uh, I was born in the Philippines, came here with my parents when I was five months old. But my story begins with my great grandpa, who was a cicada. So he was a Filipino laborer at the um, one of the plantations on the Big Island, married a Native Hawaiian woman. Um, I grew up, I graduated from Kamehameha Schools, uh, earned a bachelor's degree in biology from HPU, uh, eventually got my law degree from the William S. Richardson School of Law and ran for office last uh, election cycle. Did you go from biology to law school? <laughs> Seems like Natural a natural transition. Yeah, right? a Definitely a jump. You know, for me personally, I really enjoyed science, um, you know, deductive reasoning, logical thinking. So for me, it just made some sense to do law school and expound on those uh, skills that I do have. And so now I just have a different skill set, different arrows in the quiver, so to speak, and uh, really happy about that. I think that's awesome. So let's talk because we are going to talk about business and politics. Uh, let's talk a bit more about your experience with uh, the politics side. You know, about eight or nine years ago, I started working at the legislature. And so for me, when people ask, well, why did you jump from, you know, being uh, working at Tripler doing clinical research for orthopedics to now doing politics? And the answer to that is that pivot was simple. Um, in that politics affects every facet of our lives, whether we like it or not. And for me, the opportunity to see how things are done at the Capitol, how laws are made, and the things that go into that was really insightful. And so eight years later, I became a dad. Um, my son's almost two years old now. And it really motivated me to run for office, um, to give folks a chance to vote differently. And so that was a really great experience for me, knocking on doors, getting to know my community, finding out really what's important uh, to my neighbors, right? And so here I am today, still working on improving my community in whatever way I can. I may have asked you this before, and I asked um, some of our legislative friends as well, how many pairs of shoes did you go through? Knocking on all those North Shore doors. Hey, no, I definitely went through two pairs of shoes. Um, I did find some shoes on clearance and they were comfortable but dressy. And so, yeah, put a lot of miles on those shoes, knocking on doors. I would spend um, time after work. Every free moment I had was spent knocking on doors and trying to really connect with uh, the community as to what's important to them. And for me, the... Priorities are really public safety, uh, as we can feel, you know, lately throughout our state, how that's really becoming an important issue. Um, you know, bringing jobs closer to home as we talk about businesses, right, and how policies really impact uh, our ability to open businesses and maintain them here in our state and improving education. So giving our, our cakey a chance to not only just focus on going to college, so 50%, about 50% of our high school graduates end up earning a college degree. And so for me, just introducing them to different trades and vocational training um, that also earn a living wage was something that I was focused on. You also mentioned that your family, uh, you and your wife run a surf shop, a small business over in the North Shore. Um, how has business been affected by uh, certain policies or politics in Hawaii for the past few years? Sure. Um, you know, actually, she does the business part of the surf shop. I, I try to advise where I can, but uh, as far as how politics has affected business, well, you know, they're still recovering from COVID. Um, as we can see from 
our customer numbers, well, most of our Japanese clientele hasn't really returned yet. You know, back in 2019, there are about 1.1 uh, million Japanese visitors. And sorry, that's for the first three quarters of 2019. Compared to the first three quarters of 2024, where we're seeing 500,000 Japanese visitors. So that's a greater than 50% reduction in numbers there. And that also translates to the amount of money that our visitors are bringing in as far as spending here in our state. So our Japanese visitors spent 1.65 billion in 2019. Um, sorry, the first three quarters of 2019, whereas they've spent 774 million in this uh, recent three quarters. And so as well as what the business offers and what customers are looking for. So lately we're seeing more domestic North American visitors. And traditionally our Japanese visitors would look at things that are um, culturally, uh, culturally, uh, relevant as far as experiences so like ukulele lessons and things like that surf lessons and so as a business um the surf shop has had to shift uh to offer the things that customers are now looking for uh mark i we kind of touched on this on friday but from your experience uh, based on the background that you've mentioned how do you think the most recent elections have affected hawaii you know, thanks for that question. I know yeah, that it's like super layered. So I'm like, here's a general question. Go, Mark. It's a great question. And, you know, generally speaking, Hawaii is a blue state, right? But we have seen a turnout um, of a red wave uh, occurring in our west side. And, you know, this tells me a couple of different things, right? It tells me that one, the whoever's at the top of the ticket really does affect downstream um, elections. And two, um, the messaging I think has to be different from both uh, locally and nationally for the Democratic Party to really get to the hearts and minds of voters. And I think, you know, the simpler the message, the better. And I think that um, President-elect Trump and his team had a very short and clear message and things that would impact the folks, the pocket books of most folks. And that was an effective message. And so with respect to how this most recent election is affecting our state, I think we have to be more cognizant of what voters want and what voters need. And really that has a lot to do with our cost of living. I mean, it's it's an issue that has been talked about in for ages. I mean, I talked about it a little bit in my own campaign, but I presented issue or presented solutions as to what we can do to lower that cost of living, such as lowering our cost of transportation, lowering cost of housing by building more housing, things like that. And so, I, personally, I, I think we're still pretty secure in this state, being mostly blue. Right. I mean, more than mostly blue. We have eight uh, Republicans in the House of Representatives. We have three Republicans in the Senate, which is more than there's ever been in the past 20 years. Right. And so that should really signal to uh, our electeds what our populace is um, focusing on as far as what their priorities are at home. Yeah, I can see that. So there have been, you know, I, talks or ideas of uh, well, let me take that back two steps. There's this sentiment of uh, since our state is a blue state, that some individuals feel like their vote may not matter anyway because it swings a certain way. Like that being said, what do you make of that sentiment? Um, and where do you think we 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 can go from here? Um, we'll go into the whole like. Like what messaging could have been done better and all that later. But I kind of wanted sure, to see your take sure. on um, people feeling like it's not making a difference. And that's why we're seeing like a kind of like a purple wave, like you mentioned, on certain parts of, of, of Oahu and, you know, statewide as well. Right. 
You know, personally, I have a uh, get together with a bunch of fathers across Waialua and the North Shore um, every Friday where we barbecue and we talk story. And of course, lately it's been the elections and how that's uh, coming up. And so in the discussions I've had with my friends there, you know, it's the same thing you shared about folks not feeling like their vote counts, so why should they vote, right? And so I've tried to educate my friends on why each and every vote matters, right? And you look at races like um, the House race for Kunia with uh, incumbent Elijah Purick and challenger Corey Rosenley, and I believe that the margin there was 11 votes. And so when we talk about every vote matters, it really does in that sense. And so it's incumbent upon a us all to really take the time to get to know who is running for office. But it's not just who's running for office, it's who's running to represent you, who's running to represent your family, who's running to represent your interests. And so while, you know, we're working our two and three jobs trying to make things ends meet, we do, it's incumbent upon us to really take that time to figure out, one, what are some of the things that these folks who are running uh, for office, what do they care about? Do, do they match what I care about? And so even just taking a peek at the um, new voter guide, the electronic voter guide that just went out, I think would be helpful to at least get a snapshot at what these candidates are running on. How do you think um, what has happened in the election is going to trickle down to Hawaii? You know, that goes back to messaging, I think, right? Um, when it comes to Hawaii voters, I think, you know, it, it's really, there's an advantage that incumbents inherently have, but that wasn't necessarily true in certain races, right, where uh, seats have flipped. And I think at the end of the day, it's it's not, it's... It's important not to just pass legislation that really uh, has a huge benefit to uh, our state, but also to explain how that really affects your day-to-day -day lives. And so a lot of that has to do with communication. I think it all boils down to that, whether that's through your newsletter, whether that's you know showing up at neighborhood boards to explain what's going on uh, in your respective office and what you're doing for the people. I think these are all really critical things that our representative, those who represent us in government really have to do. Yeah, uh, one uh, commentary that I have gotten for people who you know voted one way over the other is this idea of um, whoever gets elected at the top uh, makes a difference because it'll lessen grocery prices and that has been I, I i kind of wrestled with that because then you know we go into tariffs and how that kind of affects all that are you able to explain that to individuals and why that idea you know may be correct or maybe flawed? i've heard that idea also in the recent days that hey um i voted this way because maybe milk will be cheaper maybe chicken will be cheaper things like that I'm not an expert in economics, so it's really tough for me to, you know, go in and really provide an opinion as to why that might be wrong or right. But I think that goes back into, well, maybe we should all do a little bit more research as to whether or not who we elect have will have a direct impact on um, prices at the grocery store. And so even as far as, you know, when we talk about tariffs and how that's that generally sounds like a great idea. Oh, we're going to put a tariff on, you know, this foreign country so that we promote local products or domestic products. Uh, at the end of the day, I think when you look at it, it really does the opposite. When you impose tariffs, it actually makes things more expensive because the idea is that now these products from this foreign country are going to cost more for the consumer. And so that's supposed to deter the consumer from purchasing those products. But uh, if you need something, you're going to go and buy it. Right? Yeah. Um, and are you are you able to talk more about how it affects immigration? So I think my the basic gist that I'm trying to um, even ask myself is there, the larger issues, right? 
that have been coming to the forefront when it comes to the elections are some that people feel may not be too relevant to Hawaii if you're not too privy on like what is going on within the community. So one issue is immigration. Uh, how do you feel like that would affect? You know, our, our population is made of, of so many immigrants. I mean, I myself am a naturalized U.S. citizen, right? And so one thing I can bring up is that I was helping a candidate sign wave one day when there was um, a woman who was sign waving for a particular presidential candidate. And I mentioned, well, um, aren't you an immigrant? Aren't you afraid of what this president might do to immigrants? And her response was, well, I'm legal. I'm a legal immigrant. So I'm not really worried about that. I just want to, you know, want this president to take care of all our illegal immigrants and uh, send them back home. And so that struck me, though, as um, it really stayed with me, being that, one, I did have an aunt my who came to visit Hawaii finally after 20 plus years of waiting on a list, right, from the Philippines, my dad's sister. And so um, while I can understand how folks feel about legal versus illegal immigrants, I think what we have to come back to is how we treat people in general. And so in Hawaii, being that it's the Aloha State, it's um, looking for ways to really amplify and see how our differences make a positive impact in our community and our state as a whole. And that's embracing our different cultures, whether that's Filipino, Japanese, what have you, right? It's it's all of the different cultures from all of our, from our plantation days. And so, you know, with respect to how this new administration might impact our immigrant population, I think what we'll find is that there will be some sort of economic impact for sure. I, I know uh, there are folks out there who may have overstayed their visas and are, you know, working cash jobs or working jobs that folks don't normally, don't necessarily want to work, right? And so what will happen to those folks? As well as looking at um, the impact of organizations like ICE, right, and how their job will be to look for these illegal immigrants and really send them back home. Well, my, my concern about that is ensuring that whatever happens here locally that we don't necessarily take away from our local resources like HPD where we're already dealing with so many different types of issues with public safety and so now for us to add another layer on top of that I think would do a disservice to our community as a whole and so it's it's a complex issue obviously but uh, overall, for me personally, I think that one, yes, you should follow the law, but two, also, we need to take care of each other here at home and here in our state. Yeah, I, I like that more. I've, I've had, like, I've been posed this question of um, why it is that we still have certain people um, in our, you know, in public office when it seems to be ineffective or why there's a certain party that's been there for a while. And um, I have responded to that by saying, well, maybe we shouldn't think about, you know, the current party who is majority right now as ineffective, but effective in so much that they're still there. Um, so that being said, how can uh, they, so we're, Democratic Party is a, the majority right now in, like, in our state. Um, but if you look, we can see the results, even with uh, the electoral votes, that that is not the case on, you know, the national level. So how do you think, you know, if um, certain parties wanted to reverse that, how would they go about in improving this messaging? Because we keep talking about there's something missing with the messaging. So what exactly is it that we're missing? Communication is everything. And, you know, when it comes down to it, there were there are eight hundred sixty thousand uh, registered voters, right, for the general election. About sixty percent of those folks actually voted, so that's five hundred twenty-two thousand, right? But our population in our state is one point four million. So really, you're talking about one one out of every three people making a decision for everyone in the state. 
And so when we talk about messaging, the first thing that has to be messaged is why it's so important to vote, right? To take your time, mail in that ballot. Otherwise, you're stuck at one of the voting centers for four or five, six, seven hours, right? And the thing about that, Kathleen, is no one stands in line for that amount of time if things are going well, right? Whether that's going well economically, going well, however you want to put it. The bottom line is people stand in line to vote for that, stand in line for that amount of time to vote for change, I think. You know, otherwise, if things were going well, I don't know if uh, folks would stand in line for that long. They have better things to do. But also, I think with that said, you know, though we mail in voting has uh, increased our voter participation, I think the state should also look at or the county should also look at how can, can we be more effective in having those voices heard in various communities? So like having a voting center open in Kapolei and Honolulu Holly obviously was not enough. And perhaps that voter turnout would have been greater should we have more um, polling stations. Um, so one, yes, we need to message why it's important to vote and provide those avenues to vote, right? Um, Two, I think, you know, going back to messaging, we need to look at really what's on the hearts and minds of um, the people in our state, right? And I know there are various uh, surveys out there, various tools to really measure what uh, folks have as far as priorities, whether that's cost of housing, costing more than 30% of their budget, um, grocery prices and things like that these are all really really real things that are on the hearts and minds of folks daily right and so when we talk about messaging i think we really need to put our shoes in our average hawaii voter our average hawaii citizen because at the end of the day otherwise who who are we catering to yeah i i agree with that how do you think um, we as a collaborative community can have those conversations? Because after the election, I know I had to take a break from the news and my social media feeds because people were, you know, very passionate on both sides. Some people were like, well, you voted this way, so I'm not going to talk to you. And I think I saw someone post, I actually like cursed out, you know, certain family members for voting a certain way. And um, other people were like, well, I'm glad this individual won uh, because like whoever was uh, like the, the opposing party wasn't going to do that good of a job anyway. So, you know, we have like both these sides kind of clashing and you talk about getting into like the hearts and minds of people to get a better idea of what exactly the need is and how to address it. So how do we go about and having those conversations um, in a way that like rings value to both parties? That's you know, a good question. It's okay. Yeah, and, no, and no, no. I apologize if this is coming off like as a rhetorical question because I wrestled with that as well. I understand what you're saying. So, you know, it's one of those things, right? What, what are one of the first rules? You don't talk about politics at the dinner table. And so one, I think we do need to talk about politics at the dinner table. I, it's certainly not something I experienced growing up. And so my political identity has been forming over the past, you know, decade and a half, as far as, you know, trying to figure out really what it means to vote and what it means to vote for certain folks. Um, you know, when I ran for office, I ran as a conservative Democrat, you know, meaning I was really into public safety. I was fiscally conservative. Um, but that branded me certain ways in certain circles, right? Oh, well, you know, Mark's a closet Republican or he's not he's not great for Hawaii, um, which to me. At the end of the day, we can have these opinions about politics, but. What we've really forgotten how to do is um, get into political discourse without offending one another, without really looking at the person like that's their sole identity because they, they're voting for this particular candidate. 
um i think what's important is to really get back into understanding why you're voting for a certain party why you're voting for a certain candidate what what are your priorities as a person that make you different from me and my priorities so one yeah that has to start within i think uh homes across our state you know families need to be having these discussions and beyond that friends and i i've seen some of the same things you're talking about on social media but like oh you know if you voted this way don't bother talking to me community leaders right on both ends, actually right so. right no i've seen that too and i think it's a sign of passion for sure um but at the end of the day it's it's we're still gonna see each other at foodland <laughs> we're still gonna see each other out and about and so to really take such a strong position and say hey you know what we're not friends or we're not family anymore because you voted this way i think is is misguided i think that's the word i want to use for that um you know people are passionate but they don't know where to put that passion and i think if you put that passion into organizing right into creating community events to explain to folks why it's so important to vote this so a, a particular way I think that's more productive. Um, otherwise, what are we doing? We're just spinning our wheels. Yeah. Well, to wrap this up, I, I guess I'll just go back to the gist of the show. So how how does politics affect business in LA? Like I said, you know, politics affects every facet of our lives. And for business in particular, well, you know, for example, right, the Biden administration passed the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, the Chips and Science Act, the Inflation Reduction Act. These are all laws designed to really boost business in these certain um, industries, right? We had President Trump in his previous um, time as president pass the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, you know, laws to really deregulate. And so these are things that all affect business and it's it's two different approaches right because you have two different parties and so at the end of the day um it's really important to look at how the person we're voting for will really impact not just businesses but our local economic climate how is it going to impact my job how is it going to impact my ability to pay for things like rent child care gas you know what have you everything that affects your daily lives and so you know we have to vote wisely and i agree that if, starts with getting more educated yes how do people get more educated well you know i know that, yeah <laughs> that's a great question and, you know there are a ton of resources out there right and sometimes these resources are are really partisan and there are other resources that are nonpartisan. i think you have to look at all of them to really form you know a solid opinion yeah how would um uh, you know as so for us as community advocates how would we go about in getting people more interested in, in learning more about the process so they have um so they can get a better understanding of how much their one vote can impact the much larger picture you know, like Michael Jackson said, I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. Um, and I really take that to heart in that being that I'm relatively new to politics, uh, having worked at the legislature for about eight or nine sessions, um, it's really incumbent upon us as individuals to really not just talk the talk, but to walk the walk and it's 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 easy to post on social media about any political position you might have on any issue under the sun it's a little bit more difficult to face your family members to face your friends and really get an idea of like how do you feel about this particular subject because especially in Hawaii we we don't want to necessarily offend folks right and so those difficult conversations often take a back seat. And I say that we need to learn to be more vulnerable in these spaces and really bear our souls, right? Because at the end of the day, um, 
that's what we've seen in this past election cycle. Folks just um, either feeling really depressed or really uh, or celebrating. And so, yeah, the, these are conversations that we need to learn how to have in a more effective manner and not just um, cutting folks off, just cold turkey. Is there anything else that you would like to add, Mark? You know, uh, I just want to thank you for this time, Kathleen, um, to talk about politics and how that affects business. And overall, like I said, the one message I want to uh, impart with your viewers is that folks don't stay in line to vote for hours if things are going really well. And so at the end of the day, we just have to educate ourselves on the issues and the people and make a smart decision on that. Mark, thank you so much for being on the show today. I really appreciate you. And I, yeah, I acknowledge you sharing your knowledge and your experience um, and, and you know how you feel about everything that's been going on. So I'm very grateful for that. I also want to thank uh, Jay Fidel and Karen Wong Lee and everyone over at Think Tech Hawaii for making programs like this possible. Until next time, aloha. Aloha.